How does earning some extra income slash passive revenue for doing exactly what you do every day anyways sounds like to you? Kind of crazy, right? But wait, 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 don't click off just yet because I've got facts and I'm going to explain everything. For those of you that have been following for a while, you probably know what I'm going to talk about. But for the newcomers, let me give you a quick rundown. I'm pretty sure that you watching this video has used either Apple or Google Maps at least once in your life and that you pretty much use it at least once a month minimum, right? Yes or no? So we're using those services as individuals, but some companies also do use these services and the professional plan of Google Maps isn't free. For instance, Uber pays around $19 million every single year to use Google's Maps services. Why are they paying that much? That's so stupid. Well, actually, no, because Uber being a ride sharing and food delivery company needs extremely precise maps to make sure that they're not sending your food to your neighbor. So now you understand why these professional mapping services actually cost money to companies that want to use them because that data is worth something. And it's very important that it is as fresh and as accurate as possible. Hey, what's up, peeps? It's your boy, Marcel, aka Smokehelm. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm wearing a classy Festina because, well, can't really go wrong with an old Swiss brand that was bought back by the Spanish. And technically, it is an automatic, so kind of even cooler. Wait, were they bought back by the Spanish? Yo, Festina, I've seen you putting ads in front of videos. Sponsor me already. If you used Google Street View in the last couple of months, you probably noticed that, well, some stores around your area have changed since but the map hasn't changed. Well, today we're gonna to talk about the solution to that problem that pays you at the same time, that's called Hive Mapper. But small count, how do they actually come up with a solution to like compete with the likes of Google? Put in simple terms, you'll buy a dash cam, which is a small camera that goes inside of your vehicle, either it be a car, a truck, a motorcycle, even though I wouldn't recommend a motorcycle, that will film for insurance purposes, which means if you get in a crash, you'll be able to say, hey, I didn't fuck up, that dude bumped into me, I have video proof. But at the same time, the Hive Mapper dash cam will take some imagery. And that imagery is used to create a Google Street View like map. And that map can be sold for cheaper because it's cheaper to build and it'll be fresher, which means it'll update definitely faster than the two to four years that it takes Google to map a place a second time. Did I, did I mention this dash cam pays you in crypto for just driving around like what what you basically usually do but you get crypto for it i think i mentioned that right i mean if you want to understand all the basics that go into it please go watch this video right here and come back to this one okay we we all good 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 a couple days ago there was an event in lisbon and that event was called solana breakpoint 2022 so it was a solana conference on which the hive mapper token called honey is being deployed and probably around two months ago i was on a call with some content creators and some people from the hive mapper team and they mentioned they were going to that conference and my little brain started to think it was like i'm in france lisbon portugal isn't that far hey hive mapper any chance i could like tag along and eventually we made it work. Y'all know I'm always 100% transparent with you guys. They paid for my flights and the hotel room, but this video is not sponsored. They did not pay for this content and they're probably not even going to see it before I publish it. So I can say whatever I want to say, including that like broccolis are good, which is true. I don't know why y'all hate on broccolis, but whatever. And so this is why I have amazing content for you guys today simply because I got to play around with the dash cam. I was one of the first people to get to play around with it, actually. Like, there was a function one night thrown by Helium, Multicoin Capital, and Hive Mapper, and they had three dash cams that were under, like, a, a glass box, and I had a bodyguard. So, yeah, these, these dash cams were, were pretty well protected. But eventually, at the end of the party, they, they took one from under that glass box, and they handed it to me, and they were like, go over there, go over there, film some content. Do whatever you want with it um kiss it whatever you know just do your thing bro i also said don't steal it um which i didn't i'm honest and i also got to interview their ceo ariel sideman so crazy video for you guys today i hope you're gonna enjoy it i actually asked hive mapper if we could get a big discount for you guys so i have one 100 coupon to give away to one of you guys and the only condition I'm asking for is that you share this video on Twitter, tag me on it. And like, if you're already on there tagging me, just 
follow me as well, you know? And I'll pick a winner this Monday. Also, if you don't have Twitter or if you didn't win, don't worry about it. I got you covered as well. I got an affiliate link in the description. You'll get 10% off. So around 65 bucks for the HDCS and around 50 bucks for the normal dash cam. Anyways, how about we hop into it? Okay, guys, I finally actually got my hands on the Hive Mapper dash cam. Now, I already asked a couple questions and I have a couple things to tell you. First of all, this enclosure is fully enclosed, which means that there's no real way to open the dash cam. There's, there's no screws. Uh, pretty much the only way to like get to what's inside would be laser cutting or water cutting, which I don't know why you would necessarily want to get inside your device, but um, it is smaller than what I thought it would be. For, for some reason, a lot of people think it's big, um, but if I were to compare it, I don't know, to the, like this average sized pouch, it's like really on the smaller side. So I don't think it's gonna be like a distraction at all on your windshield or on the side. Like, you know, you can side mount these. Um, there is in the back like a heat sink just to make sure that everything in there stays cool. Now, this I believe is aluminum and it is, um, as you can see, coated and it has the Hive Mapper logo on the back. You're also going to find three LED lights. The fact that it is recording, the fact that it has GPS on it, and the fact that it's turned on, right? Uh, on the side, you'll find your first, well, not your first, but you'll find your, your power adapter right here. It does not have a battery, so it has to be plugged in at every time when you're running it. And you'll also have a USB-C port if you want to actually record the footage from this one. The other one, the Dashcam S, does actually record at 30 frames per second, 4K resolution. This does 10 frames per second, 4K resolution. So still a viable option to use as a Dashcam, but you will have to plug it in right here with an external device to record that footage. Now, on the front, you can see the lens it has with a little bit of uh, indenting. So it has a little bit of a uh, relief. I'm not exactly sure what the word in English is, but... Uh, I think it looks honestly really nice. You'll find the logo on the top as well as one mounting screw on the top, one mounting screw on the right side, and one mounting screw on the bottom. Now, obviously, you're gonna wanna mount it like horizontally. So the one on the side is basically going to be if you wanna have like a, a deport arm, something that goes like this, and then to your windshield. Um, I also asked the question if it was waterproof. They said, well, It'll survive light rain. It is not IP67 rated, so I would not recommend running this outside of your vehicle if there's like a big storm going on. It has a, uh, a fair weight for its size. Nothing, again, that would be uh, annoying to you in any case. And uh, I think it looks awesome. Honestly, it looks awesome. It's a, it's a cool package. This is like the size compared to my hand. Uh, I'm a pretty small dude. I'm like probably like 5'8", so uh, I don't know how good of a like size comparison that is but uh yeah they're uh it feels really well built i uh i have a couple more minutes with it uh they told me not to run off with it so obviously i won't but yeah yeah no no first impressions first time i've actually been having it in my hands uh sturdy well built when i shake it i can't hear anything moving around inside or whatever and uh yeah I think the best option for anyone that's going to want to mount one of these in their vehicle is going to be like screw in the top and then just use the suction cup, run the power cable like over and around, you know, and then just plug it in. It takes around like five minutes to set up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Honest, honestly, like it just feels sturdy compared to some other devices that I've had in my hands. This is definitely a, uh, a great experience. They told me that in the beginning they used to like 3D print these. Obviously they were working on prototypes and whatnot. And uh, well, I can tell you, this is not 3D printed. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see. And so yeah, that's going to be uh, the Hive Mapper dash cam. And I don't think I'm going to get my hands on a Hive Mapper Dash Cam S just yet. The S stands for security. Um, but those are definitely the ones I'll be buying. And 
I talked to the Hive Mapper team and we might have a discount code giveaway for one of you guys that comments and that'll be $100 off your dash cam. So that was my first actual physical encounter with the Hive Mapper dash cam. I had a great time. That was at the proof of physical work party. So that was a little bit of audio issues in the background. I did my best to keep it on the down low. Even in editing, I applied some stuff. Anyways, if you feel like the efforts that I put into making these videos is actually valuable and brings you good information, please drop a like. And while down there, make sure to subscribe because a lot of people that watch these videos aren't subscribed. Let's move on to the interview of Ariel Sideman, the CEO of Hive Mapper. Hi guys, it's your boy Marcel, aka Small Town. Today I'm here in Lisbon at Breakpoint 2022 with Ariel Sideman, CEO of Hive Mapper. How are you doing? Good, thanks for having me, man. So I have a couple questions for you. The first one being, well, when I first heard about Hive Mapper, I was amazed about like the whole idea. You're kind of following in the footsteps of Helium of yeah. bringing people into the project and letting them actually build what your vision is. Yep. How did that idea come to your mind? Well, I've been in the mapping industry. I'm definitely more of a mapping guy than I am a crypto guy. I mean, I love crypto, but I, my, one of my first jobs out of school was at Yahoo. This is back in the day. It's like 2006, 2007 time frame, And I was lucky enough to work on Yahoo Maps. So that's really where I started to understand just like how crazy expensive maps were. And, you know, the idea of building out a new map from the ground up is obviously a massive undertaking. And I won't bore you with all the details, but fast forward like maybe a decade plus, kind of all the different pieces kind of hanging together into one place to build what we're seeing today, which is effectively a people or two community built the map, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of, like Google basically does all the mapping by themselves for the most part, right? And that is both a strength, but I also think it's a weakness, right? It's well, a weakness in the sense of right? the, the cars are super expensive. Google spends around yeah. 500 grand on a car. Yep. A high yeah. hybrid dash cam goes between 550 and 650. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and you get a discount of $100. Most of you got a discount of $100, right? So, you know, it's probably more like 450, let's say. So yeah, so but for let's say a five hundred million dollar investment, like Google gets a thousand Google Street View cars. You know, we get a million cars, right? That's a lot more coverage. That's a lot more freshness, and those things matter to customers. Could you talk a little bit about freshness, what it means, and uh, why that is important to your clients? Yeah. So if you think about it, you know, for practically any place on earth, like once you, let's say, mapped it, right, you've seen the place, you've identified as a stop sign, you know, there's Sal's Pizzeria shop over here, these are the hours of operation, these are the parking restrictions, and so forth, right? There's a lot of like little details that matter, right, in terms of how you navigate this world. And so freshness is this idea, of, you know, it, the map will become stale, right? The parking restrictions change. It's no longer Sal's Pizzeria shop. It's some other place or some other business. So all of that information needs to be constantly updated, right? And then that's really hard, right? Look, it's, it's hard to build a map that people want, but then to maintain it, you know, is very, very, very hard. Yeah, if you're not sure, when you go to some place and you see a parking spot on Google Maps, there's a bee there, right. well, now there's a tree. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so how fresh are you expecting Hive Mapper's maps to be? Yeah. In one week, one month? It depends on where in the world, right? Like there's certain parts of the world, like I mean, rural town in Kansas or Nebraska, it doesn't change that much, right? Whereas, you know, parts of Dallas, Texas are constantly changing, right? Parts of Lagos, Nigeria, Manila, London, right? There's constant change, right? These are big cities, a lot of construction projects, new things happening every single day. And so there, yes, you want that freshness to be more on the weekly, right? Or every other week. Other parts of the world is probably, you know, every month or every couple of months. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so I also heard there were going to be map editors. Can yeah. anyone do that? And do they get rewarded? So yeah, so map editors is this concept of people who are sitting behind a desk, right? So today the focus is definitely like, we gotta go collect the data, right? So map editors have something to do, yes. right? So, so the first stage is, let's go collect all this imagery that we're doing with the dash cams, step one. We're, we're gonna be in that for a long time and, and continue to be in that, in, in, in that. But yeah, once you have all this imagery and then you have machine learning algorithms that are starting to extract out all the objects, right? Stop signs, speed limits, all that kind of information. Then 
you want these editors to confirm it and also add it, right? And maybe sometimes correct it as well, right? So it's like this relationship where these map editors are kind of helping the algorithms and vice versa. The algorithms are helping the humans. Um, yeah, so 100%, like the map editors will also earn, you know, honey tokens once that project gets launched, probably sometime in late next year. Late next year, okay. Yeah. So for instance, the AI will recognize like a stop sign but the map editor might say, well, it is a stop sign, yeah. but there's another restriction right behind it that the AI didn't necessarily see. And yeah. that's what they would do and get rewarded for. Exactly, yeah. All, like all, you know, stop signs look very, very different across many different, you know, parts of the world. You know, the street signs, the names of the streets, you know, there's a wide variety. <laughs> you know, I know you're from Paris, right? And then, like, there's, there's a whole history of the street signs, right? Some of them are built into the actual building oftentimes, right? Which is very different from America. So yeah, so that's a, that's a big hard job for a machine learning algorithm to get correct 100% of the time. And so that's really where the humans come in and can correct. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because they always say you have like, as you said, some are on walls. Yeah. Some like in the US are more like, separate panels in the middle of the street, yeah. and they also have different fonts and whatnot, so it yeah. might be harder, and that's yeah. where the mapper comes in place, right? Exactly, 100%. Gotcha, gotcha. If you could map one place in the world, what place would it be? I love I love Australia. I'm from California, so maybe it's a little bit similar to California in some ways, but, so it's, but it's new, right? Like, I, I don't live there, obviously. So someplace around Sydney, like, you know, just going up and driving up and down the coast over there would be amazing you know, stopping at beaches every so often. So it, it would have to be somewhere there for sure. Oh yeah, on a nice day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Would a, because we'll talk about this a little bit later, but would a side facing camera be able to map the beach, for instance? Yeah, so the side facing camera is really there to do what we refer to as stores and doors, right? So the front facing cameras focus on you know, street signs, stop signs, speed limits, all that, right? From the perspective of the driver. So that's the front facing. The side facing one is interested in what's the name of the business over there, right? Is it, you know, 2100 or is it 2110, you know, Main Street, right? Like all that kind of information. You know, so addresses and names of businesses and all that stuff. And so, yeah, they're both very important. So get back to your question in terms of the beach. Yes, like I think it'd be really cool to be able to map the beach. And there's all these little details, right? In terms of like, hey, you can park here next to the beach, you're not allowed to park here. And so, yes, a lot of that information will be a lot more accessible to a site based camera. Gotcha. Okay. And so we know we can have up to two dash cams in every car, right? Yeah. And we can have them placed inside the vehicle yeah. or outside the vehicle. Correct. Is there a difference in earnings for one that's placed inside and one that's placed outside? Okay. So there is a difference. Yes. My recommendation is don't start by putting it outside, right? Get comfortable with the dash cam, put it inside, right? And then on a nice day, you know, when you're not traveling, you know, driving that fast, you know, start off, put it outside, make sure you mount it very securely, very critical. You don't want to lose it, yeah, right? Yeah, you don't want to lose it, right? So please, if you're going to put it outside, mount it very securely. We've, we've done it, right? It does work when you do it ex externally. So yeah, the, the reason that the ones outside do earn more is because they just get a better shot, right? They don't have glare from the window and so forth, right? So it's a much clearer view. And so they, they are rewarded a little bit higher, but we definitely encourage people to be cautious when they're mounting them externally. Okay. And they should probably take them off the roof and get them back inside when they're like during the night if they're parked outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta be a little bit more careful, right? Because if you, you know, it depends where you live, whatever, why like, towards, you know, parking indoors versus outdoors. Yeah, but if you're parking outdoors, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. It takes like, you know, a couple seconds to just screw it off. It's pretty, pretty simple. The other thing to remember is rain, right? It can, it can handle like a light drizzle, right? But if it's like pouring rain, you definitely want to, you know, make sure you get that thing inside. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is there a difference between having one dash cam in a car and two when it comes to earnings? Does one earn less than the other? Kind of like we're seeing yeah. helium where you have multiple in a location and it'll cancel out. Yeah. Or will they earn the same thing that yeah. if there was only one in the car? It, it won't earn. We don't think it'll earn double. Right. right? Because so like it, it's basically how the map tiles are structured on, on the physical world. There's a lot of times the front facing camera will get tiles, right? And they'll do a nice job of it. And then the side facing one will basically try to map that same tile. And at that point, 
you know, yet you're not going to have a situation where, you know, you're, we're not, not, there's not double rewards for that tile. It's probably the simplest way to put it. So, you know, we don't know exactly how much more, so it won't be like 2x, right? Then, but it would probably be like, my best estimate right now is like 1.4 to 1.6. Okay. My best estimate. So, like, we have to, like, you know, just see where, you know, see more and more examples of this. Honestly, we have to, yeah. <clears throat> sorry, Steve, but you got to see it running first and yeah, see how it goes. I watched the interview you did with Bristol King. Yeah. Where you talked about eventually having additional rewards if you weren't having enough, like, side facing cameras. Yeah. So, there could be an incentive to side face or front face, depending on what the needs of the map would be. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think we'll, you know, right now, the folk is that, you know, there's roughly 80-20, so 80% to front facing and 20% to side facing. If it's a lot lower than that, if it's like 90-10, then I think we will have to create some sort of incentive to get people to put them side facing. We'll see, I think like, we want to observe what happens. There's a lot from a customer demand perspective when you're really building a complete map, that side facing one is, is quite important. Gotcha. So, well, actually this happened a couple months ago, even before it launched, because you launched on November 3rd, so just yeah. a couple of days ago. Yeah. I took an Uber to the airport and I was in the front seat chatting with him. Yeah. Telling him that I did YouTube. And he had yeah. a, on the side of that, he had like a digital marketing agency, so he was a little bit techie as well. Yeah. And I told him about how I mapper and he was really excited. Yeah. But the education process for, I believe, people that aren't already into crypto, yeah, you made a great, great, like, small video ad yeah. that performs amazingly. I showed it to my mom, she was yeah. like, this thing's amazing, yeah. I bought one, you know? Yeah. Is there any plan to, like, educate the masses, people outside yeah. of crypto yeah. on the whole project? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, right now, there's two, there's two primary communities in, in Hive Mapper today. There are the crypto, you know, geeks, the crypto folks, and they're like super enthusiastic. They read tremendous amount of passion to the project. And the others are the are the mapping geeks, right? I'm a mapping geek, so that's the world I come from. And so, you know, they're definitely on the early adopter, right? Both of those groups are early adopters. They can dig into technology. A lot of people like you know, the Uber driver you have, like they, they got a job to do, right? They don't yeah. want to be bothered with all the little details that you know excite us. And so, absolutely, we do have to educate those folks, right? And I refer to it as crossing the chasm. So that is the next stage, uh, and that that ad or that commercial that we did that we put together is very large, like trying to reach up beyond beyond the things I'm doing. Gotcha. So when we go on Explorer, there's these regions that yeah. are kind of like circled in a purple color. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of people thought that that's the only place that you were able to map for the moment. Is that yeah. true or is it something different? No, so you can map anywhere in the world. Okay. okay. So they're like, and I'll get to why those regions exist. Okay. So yes, you can map anywhere in the world. Start there. There are 35 regions where you will earn more if you're mapping, right? So let's say you're in one of those 35 regions. So an example would be like London or Lisbon, where we're at right now is one of the regions, or the Lagos, Nigeria, or Manila, right? There's 35 of them all over the world, okay? And if you're in one of those regions and you do, let's say, you map a thousand kilometers, you will earn more than somebody who drove a thousand kilometers who's not in one of those regions. So we want to be very transparent and open about that. And that's really from a customer perspective, right? They want that high density, high coverage in those 35 regions. And so, you know, that's why those you know, those folks are gonna earn more, right? It's not because we like those you know, regions <laughs> more specifically. Oh, yeah. uh, the regions also serve a different purpose, which is this concept of not progress, right? So what we don't want is a situation where there's one person in a region and they're accumulating a, a ton of honey tokens, but that region is not progressing towards a viable map, right? Because there's only one person, okay? And so we're really, we're trying to say like, look, in order for that region to be viable, right? In terms of actually building something that's useful in that region, we need more drivers in that region, right? And so there is kind of this minimum threshold that we need for every region of a certain number of drivers, it's just that like everybody can feel confident that we're actually producing something of useful or utility to the customers. 
Okay, and do you think while this goes along and you get more and more customers, will more regions be added to those purple zones? Yeah, I, I, we'll see. I mean, I think that we'll, like, we'll get an equilibrium at some point, so it's hard to predict exactly what will happen. What I'd like to see is that there will always be some regions that are more, right? Because economically, there's a lot of economic activity, there's a lot of demand for them, whatever it is, right? So, but I would like to not to be like 5x more, right? Okay. I, I would like to be a little bit more like, okay, this region is two times more, three times more, maybe 50, you know, 25% more, whatever it is. That's, that's probably a healthier overall ecosystem. Gotcha. We were talking about freshness earlier, yeah. map freshness. Yeah. So that might be one of the reasons why, but why would companies like Uber or Amazon yeah. benefit more from using Hive Mappers maps yeah. to others like Google? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the, the reason customers come to us is a couple of reasons. One is coverage, right? The map can grow in many, many different places in the world, right? Which is quite valuable. The other is freshness, right? We're, because there's going to be so many different vehicles that have these dash jams, we're going to see the same location many, many, many times, right? So let's say we need review car sees, you know, on average, roughly a location once every two years. If it sees it at all, you know, during that same time period, that two year time period, we'll see a location maybe 12 or 24 times, right? Some places probably 100 times, right? So that freshness is very, very important for the customer. So there's, then there's also cost, right? Like we are just much more cost effective given how much more cost effective our Mavic pipeline and can pass that on to the customer. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's awesome. So I know that, for instance, Helium had some spoofing issues at some time. Yeah. And so you really want to avoid that. I can see you're learning from other projects. Yeah. So you included a location verification in the dash teams yeah. that goes through the Helium network. Yeah. Can you explain how that is going to work? Because some people were concerned that eventually they have to purchase data credits to make sure that the dash yeah. teams are keep working. Yeah. Okay, so you don't have to purchase data credits. Like the only thing I like to purchase is the is the dash cam, right? So you don't you just you know you don't need a sell plan, right, to like upload all the data, and you don't have to pay for data credits. Okay, so how do, how does it work? But our version of, of let's say location verification using the Helium network, it's a very simple concept. It basically says is, you know, let's say you Marcel, you're driving and you know down a road, let's call it Main Street. You see, you know, hotspot A, hotspot B, hotspot C, right? I use they drive down the same road. I should see many of the same hotspots that you saw because we're ostensibly on the same road. If we see totally different hotspots, then maybe one of us is actually lying, right? Yes. And so that's the basic idea is that if there is a disconnect in terms of what hotspots people are seeing and when they're, they, they are purporting to be mapping and driving on that same road, then something is potentially fishy. Okay. And so I started out my mind journey with Helium. So I'm super happy that Hive Mapper is actually utilizing that network. Yeah. Why did you choose Helium? Is there a specific reason or? Well, I mean, they are the biggest, they have the biggest coverage, right? So for us, it's about coverage, right? Yes. Like we want this thing to work everywhere. You know, Helium isn't everywhere. We'd like it to be everywhere, right? Like there's still in many parts of Africa and you know, South America, where I think they could add coverage. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, mo so it was really about coverage for us, right? Coverage. And it is very, very cost effective as well. I mean, we were like, you know, figuring out the cost of this thing internally. We're like, wow, this is amazing, really cost effective. Okay, gotcha. Well, Ariel, thank you very much for answering all my questions. And if you guys have any more questions, Ariel has a Twitter account. And obviously, there's the Hive Mapper Discord. I'll have all those links in the description. Please make sure to check those out. Do you have anything to add? No, thank you very much. It's been well, awesome. It's, thank you for yes. the time. Appreciate it, Matt. And maybe in another video, guys, we'll talk some more about Hive Mapper. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope that you liked this video. Don't forget, if you want to get a discount, link down there in the description. And if you found any information valuable, make sure to subscribe. Drop a like. Drop, drop a like. I mean, you guys know the drill, right? On that note, it was your boy Marcel, aka Smoke Helm, and I'll catch you guys in another one. Peace.